Thank you. Um, so I'm here to uh, tell you more about Karolinska development. Um, let's see how I push here. Oh, very clear. So uh, what I intend to go through here is the background. There's been some turbulence historically in Karolinska development, uh, how we form the kind of new Karolinska development. Um, also talk about the team, which is uh, also uh, fairly new or completed uh, recently. Also a bit about our performance in the last years, uh, the portfolio, uh, and also how we intend to invest going forward. So in, in, a, in a summary, uh, currency development, KD as we call it, is an investment company. We're listed on a small cap, uh, Nasdaq. We have a market cap of about 700 million. Um, we invest in life science growth companies, both in the private and public market. Um, we are very well connected with Karolinska, as you can hear from the name. Uh, we work closely with the academia at the Karolinska Institute, as well as the hospital environment there. We also work with other universities around in the Nordic area. Uh, we have a portfolio of fairly late stage uh, first-in-class drug development companies, as well as a few, uh, two medtech companies in the commercial phase. Uh, and uh, there, if everything goes well, there are some significant exit opportunities coming up in the two years ahead of us. Uh, that's if you, when we expect to have data coming out from the phase two trials. Uh, going forward, uh, we will continue to focus on drug development companies, med medtech as well, and the digital health. I come back to that uh, uh, in, in what proportion and so on. Uh, we look at investments where we can have an exit within three to four years in those companies. Historically, there have been quite a few companies coming through Karolinska development. You might recognize uh, Oncopeptides, Apria, Xpray, Biartic. They all emerged or been through the Karolinska development uh, uh, filter, so to say. So, going back to what has happened uh, earlier and how we're transforming Karolinska uh, the last years here. The portfolio has been refined from having been quite large and uh, we now have 10 companies. Uh, we hope we've picked the right ones from the, the larger portfolio, uh, we think so. There's, uh, as I mentioned, some, a significant upside in that portfolio if things go well in those clinical trials. We have uh, had a historical financial situation with a large loan, which has now been uh, resold in the way that it's been converted. Uh, this happened last year. And, and uh, we also have a new team uh, and a new board. Uh, and uh, there's a mix of experienced investors and in-depth and knowledgeable people in, in pharma in that team. Uh, we also have a new owner from having, after the conversion of that loan, uh, there were several investors in that loan, but one was a, a, a large pharma company, Sinobiopharmaceuticals in China, which is actually, if you look at the group, lev group level, the largest pharma company in China. Very long-term and, and uh, supportive investor uh, for Kalinska development, which is now really fun that they want to support us going forward here. So what have we then learned from the, uh, uh, the 20 years or so that most of us in the team have worked 20 years or so in life science? What, what, what are the lessons learned? Well, we, we look at clear value inflection points for in each case, and we want to see that within three years. And we then, to get there, we focus a lot on having the right people on board. It has to be both in the management on the, and on the board. It's all around people uh, in these phases. And when, when I say the right people, it's actually not just anyone who's been in that area. It's actually, ideally, someone who's done exactly what we are supposed to do before and can bring that expertise and uh, experience into that company. And we've seen that when you do that, you have a lot less risk actually getting where you want to go and avoid a lot of the pitfalls. Um, we also set a very commercial focus from the start and an exit path. That's key also to get where we need to go. So 
the third one, the, the, the other thing we do is always make sure that we have enough financing to get beyond that value inflection point that we're targeting. We normally do that together with other investors, and they bring a lot more to the table as well, especially if you go outside the Nordics and bring in international venture capital, for instance. That broadens your network and it deepens your pockets to be able to support these companies because there are risks and there will be delays and changes and so on. And have, do you have, if you have the right investors with you, you can actually manage that situation as well. Uh, and then, of course, coming back to the team at Karolinska, where we, you need to have done all those errors and, and seen a lot of strange things to actually understand what to, how to avoid those risks and also bring in expertise and networks from all over. It's a complex business, and, uh, and I mentioned it earlier in the panel. Bring in experience and, and knowledge from wherever you find it, and that is in your networks normally. So, uh, going back to the team, uh, as I mentioned, it's a mix of investor experienced people, uh, such as uh, Victor, who's an uh, associate professor formerly in cardiology from Karolinska. He's been in venture capital for 20 years. Myself, I've been in venture capital for 20 years. Uh, about John is uh, from the pharma industry as well as a researcher. So he's, he's very in depth in uh, quite a few therapeutical areas. It's a tremendous network, both in uh, industry and, and in academia. Uh, we also have Yuan, who's here present today, who's been uh, at uh, SCB Venture Capital for a long time, doing all kinds of deals. Um, we also have a connection through our main owners and, and also in the team here with Jan Sheng, who's, who's uh, helping us with networks to investors and, and uh, license deals in Asia which is quite unique and interesting as well. There's a huge interest for licensing pharma um, drugs into Asia, especially China. Okay, so what have we done these last years? I'll keep this short, but we've basically increased the fair value of the portfolio from 150 million to a bit over a billion. Um, we have uh, had made uh, substantial investments into the portfolio, mainly from our partnering investors, but also from ourselves. About a bit over three billion has gone into the portfolio companies. Uh, we've done uh, quite a few exits. Uh, we've also done eight IPOs in the last uh, four or five years. And we've converted the loan, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, these are some companies that came through Karolinska, I mentioned it earlier, I don't think we need to go into that. Um, looking at the portfolio, the portfolio can be described as fairly late stage, at least for when you look at venture capital. Uh, so there are interesting data coming out in the coming two years, as I mentioned. Um, uh, there's, you can also look at it as a very fairly diversified portfolio. Um, all the pharma companies are um, first-in-class type of drugs, meaning that they're really unique and address an unmet need and a large market. So they all have a very high potential, if we succeed, to have a high valuation. Um, I can also mention a couple of new ones, new investments we've made uh, the last year. One is uh, Anacardio, which is in heart failure, a totally new uh, mechanism uh, coming out of Karolinska Research from a professor there. Uh, we also have uh, Svenska Vaccinfabriken, which is a, a fairly new way of developing vaccines. Uh, very interesting as well, we think, with a lot of potential for different infectious diseases. Uh, those are fairly early stage, uh, but uh, we see that we can uh, quite soon get them into uh, actually phase two. Do you have two uh, meta companies, both in commercial phase and expansion, especially OS Design is now expanding in the US, which is uh, quite interesting and they're doing really well. It's a good example for where we brought in expertise who has done exactly the same thing, building a, a uh, bone implant company, growing in the US and then selling it to a big company. We have the same people here, type of people here. Promimic is another interesting uh, company which is uh, slightly uh, uh, smaller in terms of turnover, but is now starting to grow quite nicely. So what, where do we want to invest? Well, 
uh, we're all over the place, as you can might see here, but our focus has been and, and still will be venture capital type of investments. That is going into preclinical or phase one in drug, taking them to phase two A or B. That's where we focus, and we do that together with other VCs or family offices, or we might put them on an on, on, uh, on MTF to finance them as well. So that's kind of the core business. In the, in, um, we also look at the seed capital. So we actually create companies out of academia. Uh, the examples here before SVF and, 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 and Anacardio. Um, and we've done that earlier with some of the companies you saw that's been successful. They actually came out as research projects. We manned them with uh, people in the management and the board. We brought, we kind of built the structure, we formed the company. So we actually build companies from scratch, so to say, if the, if the science looks good enough. And that's quite unique in a way. Um, so then it becomes kind of mainstream business for us. It's more of like a venture capital investment anyway, but it's just that we can actually do that, which is interesting to build your own deal flow that way. Um, it's been quite successful so far. We also will be looking at, haven't done that so much yet, uh, Vibes, venture investment in private equity, in public equity. Um, which is, we think at some point, maybe the markets will go down. And, and that's a good uh, opportunity to look at how maybe to take those companies, maybe not take them private, but at least go in as a main owner and drive them as a venture capital company would do, but in the public market. That's an interesting opportunity. We, there are vibe funds right, coming up uh, elsewhere in the world, and we think that's a good opportunity potentially here as well. Crossovers, that is coming in as an institutional investor before you go public uh, and do that at a discount and then stay on for a couple of years or longer as a long-term investor. It, it's also an opportunity which we are, will be looking at more going forward. So in what areas would we invest in? Well, in, mostly in drug discovery. We'll do some part in medical technology as well. Uh, normally, we go into uh, medtech med when there is a turnover uh, that takes out cut a lot of the risk, regulatory risk, and, and, and uh, uh, well, there's a big difference if you're not on the market or if you're on the market with your product. And, and we prefer to go in when there is some turnover in the company, and then grow it. Uh, we also we also be looking at digital health, which is an interesting area. We're very far in the IT innovation here in the Nordics, and the combination with biotechnology is extremely interesting, also on the healthcare side. So we will look at companies there as well. Um, so in uh, summary, we think Karolinska development can actually, even if I joked earlier, uh, I think it can be a, an interesting investment for investors who want to go into life science. You, you, you can have the benefit of having a team which is experienced and, and actually can help out understanding if this is something that might work and make sure you avoid a lot of the risks. You also get into a diversity part for portfolio uh, with a potentially high upside and there will be new investments coming on later on. So it, it, I think it does make sense and I'm not trying to make an advertisement here but uh, you kind of take away some of the risks that you would do if you did this yourself. Okay, I don't want to push that too hard, but, but it, it, I think it is interesting uh, to look at from an investor point of view. Um, we've kind of almost finished the turnaround of uh, KD into a new type of uh, company, uh, going with lots of future prospects here. Um, we've done lots of, uh, quite a few exits and IPOs. Uh, we are aiming to start investing a, a lot more going forward. Uh, we have a fairly unique type of deal flow with proprietary deal flow from Karolinski especially, but also from having worked in this environment for 20 years in the Nordics. You, you, you get to know people and, and you, you share this with other VCs and where you build friends and so on. So we're kind of well hooked into, we see basically everything coming on in, in the Nordics, but also from the US and Europe and Asia coming our way. So that's interesting, I think, to get into that deal flow. Um, I mentioned that there are some inflection points hopefully coming in, in our portfolio and uh, 
I think the, the team is, is, uh, is actually something quite unique that we put together. So that's it. So any questions? Yes, always questions. So uh, Pat, um, one of the challenges, of course, is time. Uh, time from, from when the companies are uh, listed and, and well, sorry, from the studies and all the way to uh, the length that, between news from the company to the market. Uh, how do you navigate in this, in this sort of uh, stretch? You're referring to that it takes a long time mm -hmm, between mm -hmm. information events, mm -hmm. so to say. That's a big problem when you're on the stock market mm -hmm. because it's, uh, it's driven by retail investors mainly and, and they, they invest or divest on news flow which is also a problem for Karolinska development mm -hmm. as such. Um, but I would say f from our perspective, we have a long-term view. So we, we look at the fundamental w data coming out and we sit on these investments and, and work as much as we can with them until we have that mm -hmm. data. And then there is a natural possibility to either list them or sell the company or license out to partly so so from our kind of core business it's not a big problem but it is a problem kind of inherently on, on the stock markets and that's why having life science early stage life science companies on the stock market is maybe not a perfect idea even though I think it's very valuable for the companies mm -hmm. uh, please just elaborate a little bit more on your how you sort of identify new uh, projects or new innovations for that you want to focus on? Well, the venture capital firm is never better than its deal flow. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's all about having qualitative deal flow coming in. Also volume, but, but uh, mainly having the, the right ones coming in. Uh, statistically, we, have, we invest in about 1% of the deal flow coming in, uh, meaning that we look at about four or five hundred deals a year. We don't look at so closely at all of those because you can quite quickly sort out. But we go deeply into maybe 20, 30 cases and then we might make uh, four or five investments per year or something like that. So uh, that deal flow comes... That's quite a ratio. Yes, mm -hmm. so you, you, you need to spend a lot of time on, on actually filtering out and, and act having access to that deal flow. Uh, I would say, I mean, we, we have companies coming in unsolicited to us uh, from corporate firm, finance firms and so on. Um, the, the quality deal flow, I would say, is a lot of times where we actually get direct contact with people we know in academia or in the finance community or in, among the other venture capital companies. So it's, it's very relationship driven to get into the right deals. And you're invited to interesting deals if you help out in other cases and bring them in on other ones. So it's, it's a kind of, uh, especially the international VCs, it's important for Swedish life science that there are VCs who have those connections. So you actually bring in the big capital and the big names to our companies as well. And then we're invited back to them. So th that's how you, you, you build this. It's give and take. It's give and take. Mm -hmm. It's all about network. Mm -hmm. And actually, people don't need to like you. <laughs> so you need that's to be always, nice. That's always key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Per, for coming, uh, sharing the panel uh, and your insights in the panel talk and also here on stage. Thank you so Best much. Of luck.